Let's start with the hypothetical question. Let's just say there is some kind of a rook star that passes through the solar system. What's going to happen to everything in the solar system? And is Earth going to survive? And more importantly, how likely is it to happen anytime soon? And has it happened before? And though in some of the previous videos you can find any description, we did actually discuss certain stars that approach the solar system so much close. And here we're still talking about large distances, something like quarter to half a light year or so. What would happen if something passed much closer? Approximately 100 AU. Or the location where we find some of the farthest probes we've ever launched from planet Earth. And so what would happen if a star passed that close? And how frequent can we expect such events to occur? Well, first of all, we don't really have any physical evidence of anything like this ever happening to the solar system, but we can use statistics and a lot of different computer simulations to try to estimate how frequent these events are based on our location in the galaxy and based on the overall speed of various stars and, of course, the density of the stars in the volume of space. While also taking a look at various observations of runaway stars, or essentially stars that kind of crisscross the galaxy all over the place, and the stars that usually have the highest chance of eventually interacting with something. And that's precisely what the scientists in this recent paper did. In essence, they focused on computer simulations and statistical analysis from telescopes like Gaia that allow us to make relatively accurate predictions and, of course, even predict the motions of various stars for millions and millions of years. And so let's start with a chance. How likely is it? Well, when it comes to these hypervelocity stars or runaway stars, hundreds of which have been discovered in the last few years, the chance is practically impossible. None of them are headed our way, and the closest one is 4,000 light years away from us. These stars are usually produced because of some kind of a gravitational interaction or potentially supernova that suddenly gives them a kick, and though they will interact with some stars out there, it's not going to be the solar system at all. They're just going to be flying in every direction except for this way. And so just because of their relatively low number, this is something that we should not worry about at all. These types of fast-moving rogue stars, despite their unpredictability, are extremely unlikely to cross anything. But what about stars near us? Stars that are already relatively close to the solar system and could one day maybe intersect. And here we have to remember that space is very big. Despite the nearest star being 4 light years away from us, the overall volume of space around us does not actually have a lot of stars in it. If you were to draw an imaginary sphere around planet Earth that's approximately 100 light years across, a sphere with a radius of 100 light years, we would probably find at least 15,000 stars in the region, possibly as many as 60,000. It's actually hard to know exactly how many, because some of them are very, very dim and difficult to see, but that is a huge amount of volume of space and a relatively small number of stars. And so statistically speaking, it will take roughly around 100 billion years for at least one of them to come close enough. And so for planet Earth that's going to be able to support life for maybe around 1 billion years, this statistics means absolutely nothing. It essentially means that in the next billion years, there's maybe like 1% chance that a star might come close enough. Might. Not necessarily will, but might. But let's assume that it does. What would happen to the planets in the solar system? And here the researchers essentially ran a simulation focusing on a number of surviving planets and focusing on the eventual fate of other planets. Naturally, there were a lot of different results, but some results were a little bit more likely. And while well, it turns out that of all planets in the solar system, it seems to be Mercury that's potentially in most trouble. By being the least massive and the closest to the Sun, it has the highest chance of being affected by something with some of the simulations resulting in Mercury basically colliding with the Sun or even colliding with another planet. But even though Mercury was most likely affected by all of this, in terms of the total number of simulations and the total number of results, surprisingly, in 95% of all simulations, nothing actually happened. As in, if the star passes through the solar system, even if it's relatively close, within the solar system, it seems to not affect much at all. It seems to not affect planets enough for them to be destroyed or for them to be disrupted dramatically. Their orbits might change a little bit, but in some cases not by much. And so the chance for all planets to survive and to possibly still remain here unaffected is actually extremely high. But out of those 12,000 simulations, some did have somewhat intriguing results. For example, Venus, being a little bit less massive than Earth as well, sometimes seems to collide with other planets, including planet Earth. 
And so a collision between Venus and Earth is a potential possibility if there's ever a gravitational disruption in the solar system. Also, both Uranus and Neptune seem to have a tendency to leave the solar system if a massive star passes relatively close. But not Jupiter, not Saturn. Actually, Jupiter seems to have survived most of the simulations, sometimes even remaining the only planet in the entire system. Although interestingly, for planet Earth, another potential resolution is the collision with the Moon. Or even the collision with the Sun. Both happened approximately 0.24% of all of the simulations, or basically roughly around 20 to 30 times out of 12,000 simulations. But the most likely resolution was basically Earth increasing its orbit a little bit and moving somewhere farther away from the Sun, possibly even to the outskirts, where it's a little bit colder. And this is maybe a little bit exciting because, in some sense, one of the reasons Earth is going to become inhabitable in a billion years from now is really because the Sun is just going to become too hot, very likely shutting down the geological activity on the planet and evaporating all of the water. You can actually find out more about this in one of the videos in the description. But if the planet is slightly farther away, it has a chance to maybe stay habitable a little bit longer. Which means that there is maybe a slight chance that a star passing through the solar system hypothetically might save planet Earth, extending its life by at least a few billion years. Although here you would have to get super lucky, because in a lot of their simulations, what basically happened to planet Earth is not really as pretty. It got kicked out to the Oort cloud, where everything kind of froze. With another resolution being a capture of the planet by the star. Here, if a star that's a little bit less massive than the Sun approaches the solar system closely, there is a chance it might capture planet Earth, but also disturbing other planets as well. The actual chance is once again very low, but it is there. But in the end, when we look at these statistics, this is not a scenario we should worry about at all, and it's super unlikely to ever happen. There's only 1% chance that within a billion years from now, there might be a star coming close enough, and inside that chance, there's only 1% chance, or even less than that, that it's going to affect the planet, or will dramatically shift the solar system, affecting something in the process. Although there's definitely one thing that is going to affect for sure. It might send a lot more asteroids toward the planet, which might cause some kind of an extinction event. But in the end, what the study helps us to visualize is just the fact how ridiculously big space is, how everything is super far away, and even when, for example, Andromeda and the Milky Way start colliding with one another billions of years in the future, even if there are billions and trillions of stars moving toward us, there's still an extremely low chance for any of them to collide with anything in the solar system, or to even pass relatively close. And this is something that's been worked out statistically many times, suggesting that we don't really have much to worry about. At least when it comes to stars disrupting the solar system. And everything else, maybe, this, not so much. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.